So how has the role changed for women over the last 20 years in this yeah. sector? The, um, I'm not quite as old as Mad Men, but when people say to me, oh, that's so ridiculous, I'm like, no, it isn't. I was 10 years after Mad Men, but the stories that I could tell, um, it was very tough back then. It was very, very tough. And it's, it's tough today, but in a very different way. Um, I, I think one of the biggest blockages for women to really get through that ceiling is the, the language of men and women is very different. And you know we all know the, the Venus and Mars situation. And I think that by and large, it, it is men who are still running businesses. And if we don't get on the same page in terms of communication, it just makes it even more difficult. And all the facts, all the numbers you could ever want on why it's a good idea to have women on boards, to have women running uh, companies, to have women running countries. Um, we're a huge economic power, and what we bring to the table is different and value added. So it's not that women want to be men or act like them or dress like them. We went through that stage uh, in the 1970s, but we need to find that common language and value the the differences. Um, and I think there are still big blockages there. It's, it's, it's a communications issue. So is it better? Of course. Uh, did I think it would be a lot better, a lot faster? Uh, yeah, I did. But we're all still working on it. But we're making progress. We're making some progress. Good. So you love this industry. I love this industry. Why would you tell a young person mm -hmm. just graduating from college, why would you tell them to get in? First of all, the exposure. I mean, what you are seeing, particularly now, is we are living convergence. You know, it's, it's Madison Avenue and Silicon Valley and Hollywood and Wall Street. And that, that's what MediaLink does, and we sit right in that nexus. So I think everybody has an opportunity to, um, to live in a world where the, the volume and velocity of change is stunning. It's all kind. It's a brilliant perching post. No matter which part of the um, of the industry that you're in, I think it it fosters innovation. It loves innovation. Um, it loves failure. You have permission to fail in this industry. That's pretty cool. Uh, you don't have that in the banking industry. Um, and and the the entrepreneurial opportunities, and they're within large companies as well as the obvious small companies. So I think, I can't imagine a more exciting industry. And as we know, I've been doing this a long time and I still get up every morning. I can't wait. I can't wait. And I'm not sure that people who work in the insurance business feel that way, but this is the best. And so now we've convinced a young person <laughs> to get into the business. Right. If they're watching this, they're certainly <laughs> brushing up their resume. Um, what piece of advice would you give them as they enter their first job mm -hmm. that would allow them to s achieve some measure of the same success that you've enjoyed? I would say first and foremost, be ever a student. When I was, I think about 23, I had already been in the business for three years and I knew everything, just ask me. I woke up a year later and I, I was terrified. I like, I know nothing, like nothing. Um, don't ever stop being the student and understand the broader context in which you are working. So for example, people who live only in the digital space, they actually think the CMO worries about, well, do I, should I spend more on Twitter or Facebook? That's not what a CMO does. So I think being the student, understanding all of the different components of this very large industry, keep studying. I, I still feel like, I mean, you see me at conferences, I still am actually in the sessions. I'm sitting way far forward trying to learn something. I, I think that is one of the most important pieces of advice. Be a sponge and don't ever stop. Good advice. Where do you see this industry going in the next five to, to 10 years? And what will be the major force that makes a change? I think, you know, we grew up in the 
advertising business, I think we are not going to be talking so much about advertising. I think we're going to talk about marketing in its, in its broader sense. I think we're going to be talking a lot more about communications. I think advertising as we have known it, and we're already seeing it under under way, sort of this phenomenal change in what we mean by that, um, with the emergence of native advertising, if you will, or the emergence of uh, brands producing and distributing their own content. I heard a quote a few years back. It was a creative director from the UK, JW. Yeah, it was J. Walter Thompson, creative director. And this was probably 12 years ago, but I so now understand what he was saying. He said, advertising has to stop interrupting the conversation. We need to be the conversation. This is 12 years ago. And I think we are seeing that manifest itself now as brands begin to commercially message, but in a very different way than advertising. And I think social media, uh, you know, whether it is Facebook or Twitter, I think they are really the drivers of a very new and different look at what advertising really means. Well, I'm going to send you this segment in five to Ooh, ten years. Fantastic. And we will see <laughs> and you know I'll still if be you're here. right. <laughs> exactly. Thank you very yeah. much. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for inviting me.